So today's Wednesday and I finally have some time to catch you up on uh, what I've been doing so far. In my previous vlog, I already mentioned that the first book uh, that, that's part of the judging process didn't really grasp my attention just yet. Um, for those of you who didn't watch my previous uh, episode, I am one of the 50 judges for a Dutch Flemish literary prize. And um, the first book that I'm reading, I am about halfway, as you can see. And up until this point, the book is not yet really grasping my attention. Uh, but of course, before I can give you uh, and give the book spot, that's the initiative behind this literary prize, a good evaluation of why I think this book should or should not win, I of course need to have finished that whole book. So stopping for me was not an option and I needed to find a way to shift my thinking um, and to keep myself engaged with this reading all the way up until the end. So what happened for me? Because you can say that the book isn't grasping your attention, but what does that actually mean? And that's an important thing to, uh, to understand for yourself. So there were basically two struggles that I was having and in some ways am still having. Uh, the first one is that the book, the plot of the book didn't really grasp my attention. So for me, there's not yet an idea of where this is going. There's no tension in it for me. And it's not in an, uh, uh, in more of a criminal kind of tension, you know? Um, so there's no time pressure. Will they make it in time? There's not really a romantic tension. It is starting to develop it in the beginning. The first, I think 100 pages, it really wasn't there at all. Um, and I think, uh, an, no real relational tension or build up of any way that that I was getting from the book, basically. Uh, and the author used a lot of flashbacks to tell his story, but because it was not really clear, and in some ways it still isn't yet clear where the book is going and what the main theme of the book is, what the main plot of the book is, you don't really understand why those flashbacks are being used. Um, and that makes it a quite a confusing read, to be, uh, to be completely honest with you. Um, and second of all, I, uh, I have this little scheme of things that I want to pay attention to. I can show it to you, by the way. Um, you can see it right here. And one of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to pay attention to the way in which characters were introduced, what kind of description was given to further uh, understand who they are, what they're doing in the story, and to, um, um, let me peek on my cheat sheet, to get an idea of the time and place that was used in each and every chapter. And I uh, wanted to mark that and based on that, do part of the analysis. I was going to add more things to watch for when I finished the book so that I could go back and revisit, you know, certain pivotal scenes to further analyze, you know, symbolism, maybe the use of language. But I wanted to focus on these two first. Uh, and what I was noticing, what I noticed throughout my read was that I couldn't really say so much about them. Um, so each time uh, the scene shifted so many times within one chapter from perspective, uh, from time, from place, that I didn't really have an idea what was the key moment of that uh, chapter. What was the key time and place? Or were there multiple? Sometimes it wasn't even really clear where they were at that point in the chapter, or what time it was, what setting it was. Um, uh, and the same was for the characters. I noticed that they were introduced and you kind of had an idea who they were. And then a couple of pages later, a few more sentences were added, um, but all in quite a chaotic way uh, from my perspective, at least. So why this was hindering my motivation to read was because, uh, you know, I was like full of energy with my marker in my hand, trying to mark down all the things that I was curious about. And then you, think with each chapter, oh, where did it take place? Hmm, it was there and there. Which one was most important? I don't really know because I don't yet really know the plot of the book. Uh, 
And I don't really understand where this is going. So I don't know, maybe this part of the scene was more important than that one and the location differed. Well, you can already see it kind of started spiraling in my head. And um, yeah, that was really hindering my, uh, my motivation. Um, so then on to the positive note, how did I try to fix this? Because as you can see, I'm already halfway through the book. So obviously I find some ways to uh, to keep on going. Well, first of all is of course to just push through and be motivated and committed. As part of the judging committee, I do want to give an honest opinion of who will win because it's a 10,000 euro prize. So it's quite something. Um, um, and there are three possible winners. Uh, are these two books and then uh, well, this one. And if you want more details about those books, check out my first vlog because there I tell a little bit more about them. Um, but as a judge, of course, I do want to give an honest review of who, in my opinion, should win. Of course, we're with 50 people, so it's a group decision in the end. Um, but long story short, I did want to get motivated to keep on going and to keep giving it my fullest attention. Um, one of the first things I decided is that I didn't want to be rigid in my structure and say, okay, I need to mark all of these things. So each chapter I have to think about what was the location and the setting. I thought, finish the story first and then maybe go back to those items like uh, time and place, characters, um, uh, use of language in key scenes. First, make sure you get through it then hopefully a certain theme will appear. And then based on that, I can see how that developed throughout the story and just go back to it. So that kind of relieved the pressure for me to, uh, um, to keep focusing on the analysis. Um, the second thing that, that really fascinates me and that I know this is really motivating me, and maybe it sounds a bit weird, but it's trying to find out why am I not liking it so much? and finding words and um, uh, linguistic concepts that go with that. Um, and to me, that, that is a way also to further develop myself in terms of a, of a literary critic, an amateur critic. Um, so one of the things that I noticed and that I read about, and I think that's fascinating, is the difference between telling and writing. Um, and for me, this author is telling a lot. So these are the sentences that just plain old give you the text, what, what the author means to convey. So saying it is a cold December winter night tells you about everything. Uh, but if you say something a little bit more poetic, and I'm just brainstorming right now, but if you would say something more like um, um, the end of the year was approaching, it was uh, cold and white flakes were all around us. The reader will get the idea that we're in the winter season at the end of the year. So the feeling of the setting will be described more and the author is showing you what's going on instead of exactly telling you it. And there are pros and cons of showing and telling and um, uh, each story will have both at certain points. But what I've understand, understood of it so far is that showing is really used as a way to engage the reader more and to get his mind going instead of keep on saying this is what's going on that's all there is to know and what i feel like this book is doing is telling me a lot of things and i am hardly curious and thinking about it myself uh, and if i may draw the parallel to 1984 which i was reading right up until the point where this competition started i haven't finished it yet uh, because of course i'm now busy with these three books um, but that book immediately showed me the setting of um, uh, Oceana, where it takes place. And it is mind boggling. Within the first few sentences, I was grasped with the story and I was feeling the fear and the, the dictatorship that was going on. And it wasn't because it told me, you know, we're in Oceana, there's a dictator. It showed me and it engaged all these senses to convey that story. So I will get back to this if you like that more uh, in detail when I uh, give my final review of this book and see if that's indeed the, the, the opinion that I, that I um, uh, end up with. But for me, finding those linguistic terms, 
so to say, um, you know, what I don't like about this book so far is the difference between telling and showing. For me, that motivated me because I thought, okay, it's not just about what the story does with me and whether it resonates with me as a reader, but now I'm also reading it to get more familiar with those linguistic concepts. And it doesn't really matter if the book is, in my humble opinion, because I'm not a pro, if it's executing that in the right manner, I think, or a way that engages me, or if it's doing that in the wrong manner. Um, but it is giving me kind of a vocabulary to talk about these things, which is motivating me to keep on going and keep asking myself those questions, you know, why don't I like this book so far? Um, so that kind of um, learning attitude is helping me out a lot. And um, that's also what I, what I uh, did, for example, with the shifts in perspective. For me, sometimes they are way too abrupt and it really takes me a few minutes and a few sentences to keep track of, oh, now wait, we're now back in present time. Oh no, wait, we're back in early childhood. Um, and I started writing them down. So for example, let's see if I can find one. Right here in the beginning of the chapter, I noted, noticed again such a, for me, abrupt change. So I uh, marked it and I thought maybe it's intentional. You know, I don't know uh, that much about literature, actually very little, I think, compared to, you know, the people who really studied for this. Um, so why don't I just mark all the areas in which I am a bit insecure and don't really understand the transition and maybe come back to that later on and see, was there an intention behind it? Because sometimes the author is making a really fluent transition in perspective. He's also signaling it with some white space and sometimes he isn't. Maybe it's intentional and maybe that is just something that I need to dive into and understand better to fully appreciate this book. So I started marking it down with the intention to come back and hopefully, of course, have a revelation to say, oh, that's what he meant. That is why it was like this. And that's actually quite ingenious. That's what I'm still hoping for, of course. Um, and my uh, uh, second strategy, so the first one was being aware of um, uh, what is it that you don't like and try to dive then into the literary concepts and vocabulary that you can use um, to articulate that opinion uh, in order to further educate yourself. So the goal becomes more educating yourself in applying literary concepts than simply just reading it. Um, and the second way I tried to do this was uh, find reviews. What do other people say? This book actually got quite some good reviews so far. Um, but I did also find some interesting points that were made of the author. I still have to fact check, fact check them a little bit. Um, but if they are, I think that's a very interesting that would build to my current case of what I think of this book. Now, I'm going to leave you with that little cliffhanger because, of course, I want uh, to have enough to say about this book when I actually want to review it because I finished it. So I hope that gave some insights into... Um, uh, my current reading process, why I was struggling a little bit and how I find ways, how I found ways to solve that. Um, you'll just tag along with me for the rest of the week. And uh, I hope actually that by Friday I will finish it. I'm about here right now. So I have quite some reading to do. Um, so that's it for now. And I will check in with you later. Good morning. It is now Thursday and I got up quite early to get some more reading done. It is now almost half past six. I'm at page 400, so about 200 to go. So I can do this. So today is Sunday uh, and I did it. I finally finished the book. Now, I have a couple of ideas that I want to explore uh, about the plot, about the choice of characters' names, those kinds of things. Uh, and I want to dive into that before I give my final, final review um, of this book. So I'm going to do a bit of research and I'm going to take you along with me.
so we're now a couple of days later and uh, I wanted to give you my final opinion of this book. Well, if you watched the entire previous part of this video, it shouldn't come as too much of a surprise if I say that I didn't enjoy this book as much as I hoped I would. There were a couple of interesting ideas in it. Uh, for example, the book starts with chapter 111 and it counts back towards, I assume, one. Um, but it's part of a trilogy, so I'm not yet sure. But I think that has to do with the fact that um, uh, one of the storylines is about Beethoven's Opus 111 and that it's supposed to have a third part and that it was discovered. Um, but it is a very small storyline within the book, so I'm not really sure if this was a way to signal that that's actually quite important. And if I look at that element of three parts, I think I do see some, some interesting perspectives on the book. So for example, the book uh, partly describes some sort of love triangle between three of the main characters, uh, but also it describes the main, main character's relationship with his two siblings. So that idea of three uh, does seem to play a very important part in this book, which is part of a trilogy. So again, that number three seems to signal something that's quite important. But as it is also part of a trilogy, we won't know for sure up until the third book has uh, been written and we have read it as uh, readers. Um, so there were a couple of interesting ideas, but I, I'm not really sure if that was the intention of the book, simply because those two sequels have not yet been written. Um, so overall, yeah, there were a couple of interesting elements in it, but for me, it didn't grasp my attention good enough. I still cannot give you a 100% answer on what the main theme of the book was, what the main idea was the author wanted to convey. And I think for literature, that is especially important because those books, in my opinion, need to have that bigger meaning. Um, uh, I mean, there are a lot of super cool, like just novels uh, um, that don't have that overarching idea. And that's totally fine. But I think in order to classify as literature, but that might be up for debate, uh, it needs to have that overarching idea. Um, so that is why I ultimately gave this book a two-star review on my Goodreads account. So I think that's about enough for this book. I've rambled on about it long enough. Um, uh, and I'm looking to forward to dive into the other two books that are part of this jury contest. Now, uh, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel and be sure to hit that notification uh, uh, bell icon because I think I have some quite interesting videos lined up for you uh, uh, and I look forward to continue our discussion of literature and uh, poetry. So I hope to see you again uh, next time and I wish you a very nice week. Bye.